Hi, I want to show you essentially how to handle the Sicilian. I know you played the open, but this would be another way to to deal with it. E4, C5, and the idea is to play knight C3. This is called the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. Your first few moves in the Grand Prix are pretty much determined. And um, there's a lot of benefits of playing a system like this. What first, is the first one? Well, first of all, it offers great attacking possibilities, uh, essentially themes, and promises a very lively game. Um, and white will have a chance for the initiative. But it, it's not like completely winning. That's no, the not thing. At all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good opening, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but you have to understand that it's not completely winning. So you're not just getting guaranteed wins. Yeah, of course. It's a perfectly um, sound system. It's used regularly at the highest level. It's not a dubious gambit or so. It's not like a very poisonous gambit. No, 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 it's not. It's not a dumb, it's not a, it's not like a gambit or... Yeah, yeah. And also you avoid playing into lines that people are good at. So you're playing your own line. And it's also possible against every Sicilian, so that helps a lot. And you don't have to memorize a lot of... Um, lines. Lines, yeah. Essentially, what you're trying to do is, let's say, let's make up in development ideas you're trying to develop the following pieces in this manner so let's say this is six. like a dragon but better yeah yeah most people will, will have this setup so essentially this is the setup that you are going for initially before anything else mm -hmm. these are the moves that you want to to put in place and Uh, most of the time, uh, there is about four setups that your opponents can come up with. The first one is, of course, they want to fear and chat, or this is the most common, most popular. The I'm, other, not, I'm not surprised it's popular. It looks pretty strong. It looks good, right? And then the second one is um, they Probably want... the E6 line. Yeah, yeah. E6, but, but, e but in a different way, yeah? So they want to play e6 and d6, and they want to develop the knight this way. Ah, so it's it's not all the, it's almost like a hippo, but it's not like as bad as the hippo. Correct, yeah. And it's, then it's good. You have another setup where after e4 c5, um, knight c3, they want to play like the French structure. Mm, yeah. And play something like this. I don't really like it. I really don't know what I'm doing if, if we get this structure. Yeah. It doesn't well, even look it looks like you're losing. For? For white. No, why? Why would it be losing? Well, it looks it looks pretty bad. Let's say after E six. What is black D6. doing? I mean D three, I mean. This D if D three then black goes D four Yeah, but D four is a mistake, yeah. Why? Black is now over overextending. You can just go knight here. Oh, because yes. you, you are going to move yes, it right there anyway. Yeah. So it's almost like a, a Rui Lopez, but you didn't even have to. But you got moved there by force, and he had to waste his time. Yeah, I'm not so sure if you can compare it to the Lopez, but, but you get the idea, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is kind of like adopting the French structure. And then you have some scenarios where after e4, c5, knight, c3, uh, Black plays an early he, a6. He wants you to go bishop to c4, I know. No, he doesn't want you to play bishop b4. That's the idea. Bishop to c4. Yeah, that's what he's preventing. I mean, he, I mean, he kind of wants you to because if you do, it's a mistake, right? Yeah, yeah. but 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 by playing a6, it means that he the, the, stops you. Yeah, yeah, the destination he, of the bishop changes. It goes through g2. It, it's kind of like he doesn't want you, but if you place a6, he he kind of does also want you to go there. I hear what you're saying. So you've got those four setups. Now, the first one to address is the fianchetto. It's when they play e4, c5, and they want to play this knight c6, uh, f4, g6. And you're going to go knight to f3, I think? Yeah, yeah. And so, then try to go for that setup. Yeah, and in this, in this way, 
there's three ideas essentially you could play knight to f6 and pawn to d6 this is the one setup so let's say knight uh, let's say knight f3 knight f6 uh, bishop c4 Hold d6 on. before you go bishop c4 can you go back a bit yeah sorry to kind of slow yeah. that what if you go e5 you could you could I'm, I'm right now i'm not being move specific i'm just showing you some setups some setups that like can examples come. yeah like an oh. idea of the positions that you want so you could play bishop c4. So this is the first fianchetto setup that you need to be familiar with. Okay. And we'll go over how to deal with it. Hmm. And then you have another one where, where they go here, d6, let's say, hmm. bishop c4, e6, d3, okay. bishop g7, castles. And they develop the knight through e7. It's another fianchetto setup, right? Hmm. Um, and then you have another one where they skip d6. And they just and in, go e6. And they go in e6 instead with this the idea of playing d5 one shot. Yeah, but the bishop is too infiantiated and then, then maybe the knight comes through e7. But that's more smart though. Maybe. Because in a way it's kind of like a move ahead. Yeah. So. so the first one we want to look at is when they play the knight to f6. And um, after f4, let's say g6, g6. knight f3, d6, uh, bishop c4, knight f6, d castles. It's, oh, I thought it was d3. Right? Bishop g7, d3. And this is the first um, setup. Mm -hmm. Now, the first thing to know about this is there is a simple basic idea which really works well in this setup. You want to play queen e1, queen, queen h4. h4. Yeah. You want to play pawn to f5. You want to and play bishop, bishop to h6, h6 and, and you knight to g4. Knight to g5. And so then he, if he takes, then takes, and you're eventually going to move your knight to d5. For the, it might be a bit confusing for those who can't really read the board like in your mind as well. But mm. if he takes, then you have mate in one. That's the idea, yeah. So that's the first set part is to put that setup. So let's say for argument six, let's make it easy. So let's go queen e1, a6, queen h4, b5. I didn't know, I didn't know why he was going easy. Let's go bishop b7. Yeah. f5. Let's go rook c8. Why didn't he take? Oh yeah, the damages. No, I'm just, I'm just take. saying for argument sake, knight h6. Uh, queen d7 knight g5 so essentially this is the structure that you are first looking for this is already losing well not we, losing actually maybe but 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 right now don't worry about the specifics yeah. i just want you to have an idea of what you're trying yeah. to do as white it's not going to be as easy like i'm doing it when you're playing someone but but that's the idea right so this is the essential setup that you are trying to go for this is the ideal scene now, once you've got this, the winning idea is very simple. You have to get rid of the knight on f6. Mm -hmm. Now, there's three ways of getting the, rid of this knight on f6. Knight to d5, somehow land your pawn on e5. Yeah, knight d5. Or, or sacrifice your rook. Yeah, knight d5 works. And Sacrificing then, your rook also can work. Yeah, yeah. You could take on, f, on g6 and sacrifice your rook. That's plan number two. Yeah. There, there was this puzzle that was like very confusing. Uh. For instance, if it's white move now, take uh. probably h takes, h takes, and then rook takes, bishop takes, bishop g seven, right? Or, some some sort of idea like that, yeah. Well, it was bishop to f g seven. I mm -hmm. don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Another idea of getting rid of this knight is to sacrifice a pawn like e four, e four to e five, yeah. and then use your knight on e four. Yeah. So you have various ways of. Of doing the same thing okay okay so once that is done the next thing you need to know about this position is it's very important that you do not play knight g5 before playing bishop to h6 that's a very important rule because yeah, yeah. knight to g5 i mean yeah you can get an easy win but when it comes to strong players 
Mm? Yeah. You might, and they play a certain line. You might, you might just lose. <laughs> yeah. The actual reason is that if you play knight g5, you can just chase mm-hmm. away with h6. And then now he's just got an Indian kind of position. Yeah. So. I mean, there's one move that really works though. Ooh, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not I, worried about specifics. I just okay. want you to get the idea. Okay. Then the other thing is, uh, don't play. Um, don't take on g7 before you put the knight on g5. That's so, very important. Let's say you play here. So the idea is don't take on g7. Before you play knight to g5. Because again, you always run into this move h6. And, and even, there's no attack here. And it's not even risky to play g5. Yeah. Because how are you going to get that pawn on g6 somehow and mess up his structure? Even yeah. if so, you do, it's better for him. Still. So this, these are very important ideas. Mm-hmm. Now, once you've got that... Um, your next part is just let's see how this pans out in a game. So the game we're going to use is an amateur game where white played e4 and after c5, Sorry. knight c3, he played a6. Play a6. So That's now, actually a very smart. So this goes to our early idea. Now you know that if someone plays a6, your bishop is not going through c4. So you're going to go like, let's say f4, then g3. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. But, but like, but the guy who was playing white here was an amateur. Didn't know, he didn't Ooh. know that. So he played bishop c4. So this is the move he played. Anyway, an after b5, he wasted the move and had to go bishop e2. You know, the problem is this. His right? best of, move was to go bishop to f1 instead of that. Yeah, maybe. Or he could have gone bishop maybe. to d5. Going to b3 is not an option because after c4 you lose material. No. So he goes bishop e2. Okay, that was just a total waste. And after bishop b7, it goes d3. Right? Yeah, because black was threatening b4. Yeah. And was a, it was like our own defense, but better. Black goes d6, f4, g6, g6, knight f3. Bishop to g7. Bishop g7. Castles, knight f6, and queen e1. Queen to e1. So I don't know how white's... Did white win? Let's look at the okay. game and we'll see. Queen e1, black castles, and queen h4. So black goes knight bd7. And here, white starts the plan now, second stage of the plan. He's gotten this piece, this piece here. This The queen is one of the most important pieces. Yeah, so he goes f5. He wants to play this bishop to h6. And after b4, Knight to d1, a5. Black is overextended. He goes bishop h6. Uh, I wouldn't say overextended. Well, it not looks over, like it looks he's nice. Bishop h6, yeah. He's trying to create counterplay on the queen side. Mm-hmm. a4, knight g5. Now we've got the f- second part in place, right? Yeah. It's been done nicely. This game is about to end drastically. Yeah, so yeah, Black played a weird move, knight e5. It's not really, I don't see how it's relevant to the defensive needs of this position. So, now, the last act or the last part of the game is eliminating the knight. And here, white takes on g6 and after hg6. I thought fg6 was better. It's actually not better, it's terrible. After pawn takes, oh, but knight e6. Knight e6 wins material. Ah, but you, at least you have a better position of not losing. Yeah, a better idea was to play knight to g6. But after queen here, bishop c8, g4, there will be, still be a continuing attack. Yeah, but knight to g6 was better anyway. Yeah, it was. Okay, so going back. Uh, yes. Knight g5, fg6, hg6. Here, now we get rid of the knight. We play rook f6. Now here comes the bishop. Oh. And after bishop f6. Bishop to g7. Okay, so yeah, here if he had played the pawn text, then yeah, bishop, G, then bishop G7. takes, king takes, queen mates. Uh, but here, he decided to play bishop here. Just now, it's easy here 
to make the wrong choice also. Yeah, you could take the rook by yeah. accident. And you'd still be winning, but, but it's not the best, right? What if you what if you end up what if it's like a blitz game? Let's example. Yeah, but if you didn't see mate, you would it would be justified. So it's a beautiful move, first of all. Bishop takes runs in to take and it's mate. If you don't take the bishop, you have queen to h8, h8 me. Yeah, yeah, if you take the knight, there's this mate. Yeah, there's just no way of stopping. Yeah, yeah. You if can't you take play like knight the to king, f6. again, it's mate. So, you get the idea of essentially how you would um, then play the, the grand prix. Grand prix. And there, there is much more complex ideas as you go, but this is the first idea to really grasp especially against this fianchetto system 